What's up, everyone? I hope you all are having a wonderful and blessed day. And if not, I do hope that it gets better. I would like to say thank you for stopping by the channel and checking out today's video. It means a lot to me and I truly do appreciate it. Now, if you're enjoying the content that you're seeing here and you wouldn't mind continuing to help support not only me, but the channel as well, please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button that's currently sitting underneath the video. It's free. It'll only take you a second. And make sure to hit that bell icon so you can stay updated on all my future content. Now, today we're going to be discussing the recent hate train that has been ramping up for Gotham Knights over the past couple of months and deciding on whether or not Gotham Knights truly deserves the immeasurable amount of hate that has been catching. I honestly don't think I've seen a level of hate like this for a superhero game since Avengers and trust me, that game has had its fair share. I've been there. It sucks because for the gaming community, Avengers has set a very, very low bar for future superhero games that are not coming from Insomniac. It's legitimately just how things ended up turning out. Gotham Knights original reception two years ago when we got the world premiere was pretty solid. People were enjoying the gameplay, the designs, the new open world. That's going to be the biggest, most alive version of Gotham City to date. And then three months ago, the hate for this game started to set in extremely fast and extremely furiously. So to start with the gameplay, right? The Nightwing and Red Hood gameplay was like a bomb going off. Nightwing's combat, I will admit, was very floaty, but after seeing recent gameplay, it looks like that's actually gotten a lot better. People in general are annoyed by all of the dodging that we've been seeing in the gameplay, especially from Nightwing himself. But what you have to understand is that dodging and evading are of the utmost importance here because this game doesn't have a counter system, so it's imperative that you dodge or you're just gonna get hit. It's that simple. I know I'm not saying that you need to do 47 kickflips before you choose to make a single attack, but dodging and invading on the normal is something that you're going to have to come to terms with. Each of these characters have their own styles, which is fully reflected in how they play, which leads me to one of the most talked about things in this game, which is Red Hood's combat. Now, I'll be honest, I love his combat, right, for multiple reasons. I've seen people very much dislike his combat because he uses his guns with everything instead of outright boxing and striking. I wonder what other game that I'm pretty sure we all have played where he primarily uses his guns as blunt weapons in combat. Now that we've gotten that out the way, the more that I see those claims, the more I believe the fact that people must not have actually played Arkham Knight or at the very least paid much attention to it because with the exception of two very specific things those being the counter mechanic and the fluidity of the gameplay they're pretty much dealing with the same thing here he's using his guns in combat both as blunt and ranged weapons with takedowns here and there and other various gadgets that are meant to fully put the enemy down or just pepper them up setting them up for an even bigger takedown he's technically using gun food which is a fighting style, an actual fighting style that's seen in things like Max Payne, Metal Gear Solid, John Wick and the Matrix. It's cool to watch and it's going to be even better to perform. It's as simple as that. Moving over to the other aspects of his gameplay, like his mystical powers, I'm going to just say this outright. Contrary to popular belief, his mystical powers were not just randomly added in for the sake of this game. Jason actually has training in the arcane arts. Him coming out of the pit with magical abilities after being resurrected was pulled right from the comics, trained by both the All Cast and Talia Al Ghul, who actually begged for him to be trained in the arcane arts before becoming a member of the League, which is also a part of his endgame storyline. Learning more about exactly why he was brought back and why he came back with these magical abilities because he's not the same person that he was before he died, before he he went into the pit in terms of gameplay one of the only things that i can reach common ground on with people is the fact that this game doesn't have a counter mechanic it sucks because like that was one of the best things about the arkham series but in this game only dodges and perfect dodges are here which do reward you if you're actually able to pull those off you want to know another game that we all love that has no counter mechanics but dodges and perfect dodges that reward you if you can pull it off this game right here now diving more into the core game itself, there are things that people do have an issue with, like the core gameplay itself, the dialogue, character models, and more, with the cherry on top being the Arkham comparison. For example, Red Hood and Harley Quinn. Red Hood is known for being the most brutish member of the group. He would rather beat information out of you instead of just simply talking it out. His body type matches his personality. 
I mean, yeah, does he look like the star linebacker for the Kansas City Chiefs or whatever football team it is that you like? He does, but it fits him because of who he is. His body type matches his personality, a straightforward, brutish, aggressive kind of person who's legitimately angry like 24-7. Now, Harley's design is one of the most unique designs that I've seen for her in years. The one thing I don't like, though, is the hair. That I can be honest about. It doesn't sit right with me, which is weird because I don't know what the transition is in the story because we see her early on with her pigtails and then eventually she ends up coming to this hairstyle. Don't know how that transition gets there, but it is what it is. Other than the hair, the outfit is fire. I like the design. Now moving over to the general gameplay, I feel like that's based off the fact that it does look a bit slower. It's not as fast paced like other games where you can zip in and out of combat just as easily. I can, I can agree with that. I've even seen comparisons to Avengers combat system, which I don't agree with and which is wild because one of the best things about Avengers was its combat system and every character's uniqueness and the depth that you're able to go into. And that's something that's clearly reflected here in Gotham Knight. Each of these characters are extremely different and you're gonna be able to dig even more into that uniqueness once you start messing around with their skill trees and whatever. They're going to play how you want it. They're not gonna play like anybody else unless you choose to copy somebody's build or whatever. You get what I'm saying, right? Now, something that I am mixed about it's just how everything looks in general. Because if you go back and look at the initial gameplay trailer with Bagger and Robin, it definitely looks, it definitely looks smoother, right? It's more fluid. Everything is flowing so well together. But if you look at recent gameplay, it's like it's not moving as smooth anymore. The, there are these weird pauses and gaps in between actions and everything it is that you do. It, I honestly hope that that's not the case when it comes to release. But there's really nothing more we can say about that because we haven't played it. So we don't. We don't know, right? We just don't know. The UI design, which is something that I've also been seeing, I'm not worried about that and you shouldn't be worried about that because it's been confirmed that you're gonna be able to change the UI to look however you want it to look. You're not, you don't have to be stuck with the simplistic UI design that you've been seeing in a majority of these gameplay videos. So please go ahead and knock that worry out of your head. The dialogue is also half and half because you'll have Freeze's gang having legit conversations and then the freaks, Harley's freaks, kind of just literally say anything, but that doesn't bother me as much and it shouldn't bother you because I'm not really expecting every single goon to have an intelligent conversation, especially when they're finna get beat up like five seconds later. Now the PS3 and mobile game comments will forever be wild to me because let's be honest, if this was a mobile game, you would need to own two completely different phones because playing this would drain your battery from 100% to 35% within 15 to 20 minutes. And for those of you that are using Marvel's Future Revolution as an example, I've played the game myself. It's been on the channel before. You need a top of the line phone. Actually, no, not even top of the line. You just need a more than decent phone to be able to play that game the way it's meant to be played without killing your battery and mobile data in mere seconds to be able to play without lag and performance drops and literally any other issue or bugs that you could think of that could be a result of that. The PS3 comments, I'm honestly just gonna leave that alone because people said that for everything nowadays. I don't really pay that much attention anymore. The Arkham comparisons, I've been waiting to get into this one. I understand that the Arkham games are some of the best superhero games around by far, but Gotham Knights is not connected to that trilogy. It's not even connected to Origins. It's his own thing. It's trying to test out a new formula. The more you compare it to the Arkham games, the more you're going to end up disliking it because whether you know it or not, that bias that you have will influence any thoughts that you have about the game. It's honestly nothing to just sit down and give things a try because you may end up enjoying yourself more than you thought you actually would. It's the same thing that happened with Guardians of the Galaxy. People were expecting Avengers 2.0, hoping that that game was going to fail, praying that it was going to fail, but then it released and the reception changed so much for the better, Guardians became a solid hit and all it took was for people to give it a try. Now, if you don't like Gotham Knights simply because you're not interested in it, then that's fine, right? You have every right to feel how you wanna feel, but the least you can do if you're not in that boat is give it a solid chance before you pass any hard judgment on it. Or you can stop running to people who are genuinely excited for the game and trying to spread your feelings about the game onto them and you can continue to dislike it in silence because you legitimately have no reason to go around messing with people's excitement like that's just 
you gotta do like you gotta be better than that you, you gotta find something to do but the verdict stands with all of that being said i don't believe gotham knights deserves all of the hate that is catching and with that being said as well that brings the video to a close let me know down in the comments below how you guys feel about this do you think it deserves some of the hate that is getting what did you like what do you not like let's go ahead let's start a dialogue and again if you've enjoyed the video please remember to like share and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so that you'll never miss out on any of my gotham nice related content and i will catch you all in the moonlight peace Time to a bed, trying to live life Pull it to the club with the bottles on ice Get it back in by the end of the night I'm an artiste of social light Trying to do a bed, trying to live life Pull it to the club with the bottles on ice Get it back in by the end of the night I'm an artiste of